Hello everyone. I am Samia from the University of Illinois and I thank you for coming to my talk. Today, I'll be speaking about how microstructure does not matter for drop impact on viscoplastic fluids on thin films. This project is motivated by the application of drop impact physics of wheel stress fluids in fire suppression. To refresh your memory about the severity of this issue, here is a map of the forest fire plumes over the United States in the past year. Here is something similar for the Amazon rainforest fires in South America and the Australian bushfires, which are all very serious issues affecting each of us globally. Efforts have been made by many companies to enhance fire suppression and prevention techniques, one of which is shown here by EarthClean Corp, with whom our lab also collaborated in the past. Here we see firefighters testing gel-based fire suppressants, which are essentially yeast stress fluids on some burning wood. Within a very short time, the fire seems to be getting under control by the virtue of using these gel-based fire suppressants. And within as little as eight seconds, the fire is completely out. To test the effectiveness of gel-based fire suppressants, here we show a more controlled experiment where water is compared with water containing a small amount of additive that makes it a yeast stress fluid, which are impacted onto a flame. By the time the second drop of the yeast stress fluid has just impacted, the fire is already out, while water is unable to put out the fire even after numerous drops falling on the burning piece of camphor. This is the power of using yeast stress fluids which possess enhanced coating and retention properties. But the coating performance is heavily influenced by experimental conditions, which control whether a drop will stick to the surface or spatter away. To understand the physics behind this problem, we'd impact drops of a yeast stress fluid, laponite in our case, on coated substrates and look for different impacts post behavior, whether the sheet is formed or if the droplet is splashed or completely sticks to the surface. The crux of the problem is to relate the macroscopic flow properties of the drop impact, <clears throat> especially the stick splash behavior of these complex fluids and study the effect of the specific microstructure on the interrelation between macroscopic rheology and drop impact behavior. We will be testing a specific dimensionless group used in earlier studies to classify drop impact behavior and understand the splashing criteria that this group affords, which help clarify the conditions for a stick splash transition. This dimensionless group defined as a ratio of inertial to total shear or flow forces, was first proposed and worked well for drop impact of carbopole microgens. We shall be testing this group with a microstructurally different yeast stress fluid, laponite, and see if the critical value for a stick splash transition is different for the two fluids. This should answer the big question of our talk. Does microstructure really affect drop impact behavior? And if so, how? And also what is the effect of thixotropic aging, which also is a microstructural effect? We carried out this drop impact study experimentally, and here is the experimental setup, but I will not be going into the details for which you can refer to the supplementary material. Again, because we are using two different fluids, we have to characterize the rheology of these to be used for studying the drop impact behavior, for which again, I'll not be going into the details and you can refer to the supplementary material for the complete information. But I'll only point out that both carbopole and laponite, which are used in this work are yeast stress fluids, but they're microstructurally different. And most importantly, carbopole, as seen by monitoring the linear G prime versus aging time, does not show any change with time, whereas laponite shows appreciable recovery, so it is a signature of thixotropy. So carbopole is a yeast stress fluid, but it is not thixotropic, laponite is. Now, we jump to the drop impact tests for laponite. Here, I'm comparing three tests for laponite at a constant value of coating thickness, concentration, and drop diameter. The only thing different between these three samples is that they're impacted at three different impact velocities. These samples are unaged, so they were pre-sheared and tested immediately so that these samples are not thixotropically recovered. Now, as you can see, as one moves from a lower impact velocity to a higher impact velocity, the drop impact type moves from a more stick to a more splashy, spattery type. Now, we did these tests for this high dimensional multivariate parameter space. So we need to collapse the data, the multidimensional data into a single dimensionless group using this formulation. Also, we can, we can classify the qualitative drop impact behavior using this qualitative classification criterion and plot what are called impact regime maps in order to study these drop impact study uh, tests more conveniently. So before I jump into the drop impact regime maps, I have to clear out what this is. It's a plot of this dimensionless group versus dimensionless coating thickness. 
Now, in this plot, I'm showing, showing the results for 3.5% unaged lapanite, where each point corresponds to a set of values for the, for the parameters impact velocity, concentration, coating thickness, and drop diameter, D and T divide, defined over here. Also, in this map, each color signifies one specific type of impact event, which is basically classifying the drop impact events we saw in the previous video using this criterion. And most important thing to note about these maps is the regime boundary between intact sheet and broken sheet type events, which is the y-axis, and is a critical value of C for a stick splash transition. Now we did this for laponite and carbopole. Well, the carbopole results are from a previous work by Blackwell and coworkers. And we compared this result to what we obtained currently for laponite. As we can see, for both the fluids, despite them being very distinct microstructurally, the dimensionless group works really well. The impact regimes are separated into separated areas. And there's a constant regime boundary for a stick to splash transition. But the only problem is that the values of C are different between the two fluids. So if you remember, these two are microstructurally different used stress fluids. So despite the fact that the dimensionless group has these two good features, the exact values of C do not match. So difference in flow behavior may as well rise from a difference in microstructure. This could, but this could also be because of partial thixotropic aging in laponite because as I showed you earlier, it's a thixotropic clay. Now I'll not be going into the details of why there's a difference between carbopole and laponite. We rationalize this in a supplementary material shown over here. But I'll be moving to a more interesting part of the talk is what is the effect of thixotropic aging. Now, to show you the videos for the effect of thixotropic aging, here I'm showing the same three tests for laponite, except that now the samples are aged for 10 minutes. You pre-shear it, age it for 10 minutes, that is you let it sit at rest and then you test. You can con contrast this directly with the unaged tests I've shown you before. And as you can see, for every other test condition kept constant, Aged laponite splash splashes much less than an aged laponite. So the splashing drops pattern, the ejector sheet breakup is suppressed. So these videos are also available in the online supplementary material. But the qualitative observation is that the impact becomes more stick than splash as the sample ages. Now we can also look at this quantitatively as we plot the regime maps. The first three, the top panel are for the unaged laponite and the bottom three are for aged laponite. Now, all the good features of the unaged laponite are not retained in this case. The value of the regime boundary, you know, C for a stick splash transition is different across the stick concentrations. The values also don't match with their corresponding unaged counterparts. So there's something going on here that we are missing. This is because the scaling relation doesn't work for aged samples since we are using the same flow properties over here as we used earlier for the unaged samples. So to make this group universal, to be able to include the effect of thixotropic aging, we have to use the correct flow properties for the age samples, because as we know, as the sample ages, thixotropically, the yield stress viscosity, they change. They usually increase if they're thixotropic. So we hypothesize a modification in order to make this group amenable to thixotropic aging or rejuvenation. We modify this dimensionless group, which has no provision for any thixotropy, to make the three flow parameters in a denominator functions of aging time, the yield stress, consistency index, and the Brigham plastic viscosity. Now we define an aging ratio called phi sub psi, where psi is the flow parameter, and this is the ratio of the aged to the unaged flow parameter. And using these, you can define the age, deal stress, consistency index, and become plastic viscosity. Using that, you have a much more general dimensionless group, which has provision within itself to incorporate the effects of aging via these three aged factors. Now, the challenge lies in determining these three factors so there are multiple hypotheses of how this can be done, but I'm only going to focus on one hypothesis, which, is, which was found to be the most credible one in our work, is that we only change the yield stress based on a certain strategy. The details of the other hypotheses can be found in the online supplementary material, but I'll not be going through them. I'll only be focusing on the results of the first hypothesis, which was the most credible one, and it used the changing elastic modulus to modify the yield stress. So you, let, so you monitor the elastic modulus as it ages, and then the factor for yield stress is defined as a factor for the elastic modulus, storage modulus times the factor for yield strain. You get the store factor for storage modulus from here and the factor for yield strain is obtained from LAOS or strain amplitude sweep tests in large amplitude oscillatory shear. Gamma Y is found to be very similar for both aged and unaged samples, which also corroborates with uh, results from the literature. So using these two, we can now get phi sub sigma Y 
which is defined as approximately equal to phi sub g prime, whereas phi sub at infinity and phi sub k are one for this hypothesis. So this yields the modified dimensionless group for incorporating thesotropy. Now we plot the regime maps using this modified dimensionless group, this extra factor multiplying each stress to, to accommodate for thesotropic aging. As we see, all the good features are now back. There's still good shift separation between the regimes. The regime boundary is still a constant value for a strict stress transition, but now the values are comparable across the three laponate concentrations, as was the case with NH laponate. And even more importantly, the values themselves are corresponding, cores, comparable to the corresponding unaged samples within experimental and data fitting errors. But before uh, we get too carried away with ourselves, we have to keep in mind a few caveats, is that this dimensionless group may fail for very lower values or large values of coating thickness, which are called very thin films or pools, because in those cases, you cannot define a dimensionless coating thickness. Surface tension effects may be significant for smaller droplets or lower concentrations where the yeast risk is not the dominant factor and surface tension is, doesn't appear in this group. This group may also fail when there is, a, when there is appreciable extensibility or viscoelasticity in the fluid because even those are not included in this dimensionless group. So to summarize, we showed that a dimensionless group suggested for carbopole also works for unaged laponite. The different microstructures really do not matter as far as the, microscope, the macroscopic flow properties mattering, but we did see that the value of C is over a factor of two larger for carbopole compared to laponite. But those are doubted the exact specific details. The general physics is still captured very well with the ma macroscopic flow properties. Also, we showed in some indirect ways of predicting properties of age samples, which cannot really be measured per se uh, using conventional radiology because any shearing you do breaks down the structure and you will not be measuring the flow properties for the age samples. And in this case, modifying the dimensionless group, group by only increasing the yield stress by a factor of by how much G prime changes was found sufficient to capture the effects of aging. Looking forward, uh, as I mentioned before, this group may fail for very thin or very thick coatings or where there may be appreciable elastic effects or surface tension effects at very small drop sizes or smaller values of yield stress. Additional effects need to be accounted for, for elastic effects coming from added polymers as seen over here. This is this, these videos show carbopole, one a pure carbopole, the other one with a small amount of a high molecular weight polymer added to it. As you can see, the splashing is completely suppressed. So these also have to be accommodated into this dimensional group. Finally, microscopic properties may actually matter when the different elements in a fluid flow problem interact at a scale small enough for them to distinguish between different morphologies, for example, between sparse and jam gels. With that, I'd like to say thank you for listening to my talk, I would like to thank NSF, PPG, Professor Statra, Scott, Cassio Ishi, and people from PNG for helpful discussions. And my undergraduate, Anthony Morales, who was uh, instrumental in me collecting the drop impact data, but he wasn't with us when he took this photo. So let's give him a mask. Okay, thank you for listening. And I'll be looking forward to your questions in the live session.